5G uses a variety of frequency bands split across two ranges known as FR1 and FR2. So what does this mean for the design of 5G networks? The frequency bands used by 5G new radio are split into two ranges, called FR1 for bands below 7.125 GHz and FR2 for those above 24.25 GHz. Like other mobile communication systems, multiple frequency bands provide options to allow operators, countries, and regions to use 5G more flexibly, making sure it doesn't interfere with other technologies using radio frequency. In general, 5G frequency bands are handled by international agreement with the help of the 3GPP to reduce interference and make rolling as easy as possible. Due to crowded and fragmented spectrum, this means there are plenty of options for 5G operation. However, more bands means it's more difficult to support them all in each device, limiting universal rolling. Prior to 5G, mobile networks were designed with people in mind. Well, not really people, but phones, and a smattering of connected tablets and computers. 5G was built from the ground up to extend mobile networking beyond people to industries by connecting billions of things. At the same time, the services we use on our devices are getting increasingly complex and demanding. As such, 5G has introduced a second frequency range called FR2 to provide even more flexible options for deployment. There's a catch. The largest investment a mobile operator makes is in cell sites. This means macro towers or rooftops in urban areas. When an operator wants to increase capacity or deploy a new technology, they typically want to reuse these sites as much as possible. This means they prefer to have similar frequency bands to ensure any new technology has similar coverage. Otherwise, a new technology with a significantly higher frequency would need considerably more cell sites to provide the same coverage. In general, bands around 1800 MHz, 2.1 GHz, 2.6 GHz, and even 3.5 GHz can be used by existing sites. But when we introduce FR2, or frequencies above 24 GHz, we need to completely rethink deployment models. Millimeter wave is so high that penetration of radio signals is incredibly low. Even a thin wall or glass can block mobile signals, meaning mobile networks using FR2 are more akin to Wi-Fi deployments. If outdoors, they typically need line of sight and are deployed to cover hotspots. Compared to FR1, FR2 offers a lot more spectrum for use, which translates into a whole lot more bandwidth. But that bandwidth comes with the trade-off of coverage. As such, mobile operators need to make trade-offs between the cost of leveraging existing cell sites and the cost of deploying a new type of infrastructure that needs to be closer to the user on lampposts, bus stops, street signs. The good news is that sophisticated tools and techniques allow devices to connect across multiple sites simultaneously and a controller can assign resources based on the usage needs of each. For example, two people standing in the same area could be covered by both millimeter wave and traditional macro cells. One person could be trying to use VR, while the other is simply messaging a friend. The network can intelligently assign each to a cell or even split each load across multiple cells, depending upon the network load. With 5G, operators need two different deployment models. FR1 follows more traditional deployment with macro cells providing coverage and reasonable capacity. Great for IoT and general use. FR2 means a new model closer to the edge for extreme bandwidth and high density situations like stadiums, parks, food courts, meeting rooms, hotels, and even mobile private networks. Combined with intelligent mobile controllers and artificial intelligence, FR1 and FR2 allow operators to balance coverage and capacity and add yet another tool in the 5G toolbox to help them build the digital economy. Thanks for watching. Was that an REM song? Uh, what's the frequency, Kenneth? Is it? Is that right?
What's the frequency, Kenneth? 